Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. I finally got time to play with 3.2's new toys and check out this missile. Do you see that jet in the distance? Nice. The speed, range and control buffs to uh, Lise's missile are absolutely brilliant from a user's point of view, a nightmare from a pilot's point of view. And I'm beginning to believe that maybe, just maybe, the age of tyranny of the Nightbird and the Stealth Chopper pounding everybody just might finally be over. Before 3.2 you would have got away with this, dropping your stealth bombs from on high, staying in stealth mode and thinking you were safe. Not in 3.2. Absolutely loving these rockets. So the other thing I just want to test is the below radar rule where 30 meters or lower a vehicle can't lock onto a helicopter anymore. And with a reduced number of um, rocket launchers on the field now, does that improve the survivability of the Apache? I also want to put into practice some advice you guys kindly gave me uh, from my last video, pointing out what I was doing wrong. So I've made the changes there. We'll talk more about it later. The other thing I'm enjoying is a return to uh, Battlefield of old, the class system. So here's an example, jumping into a tank, being a wingman. And now when it comes down to repairing, particularly if the vehicle's now using the active protection system, us engineers, we have our repair torch back. Uh, I remember doing this as early as Battlefield 2, and I am very, very much enjoying the return to that classic gameplay. The other big thing for me, I know I'm late and many of you have probably already seen it, um, I'm really enjoying the rework of the breakaway map. So you've got these new areas like you're seeing here. This is uh, E1. It's a little uh, crash site that you now need to capture. And also in the top left, you're seeing the new redesigned rig, which is much more prominent and we're getting a lot more action on it. So I'm really enjoying that. So for those who are new to the channel, what we do here is the rule is we play for one hour or less and then show you honestly outtakes from the gameplay in that evening for what you can realistically expect if you were to put your time here and basically demonstrate that Battlefield is a fantastic game for people who may be a bit time poor. Based on some feedback and some success on the Overwatch videos I've been doing, I'm going for a different structure here where, where rather than going for like chronologically showing you what happened and trying to weave it together, taking out the filler, I've instead grouped events into themes. So for example, Lisa's missile launcher, flying the Apache, using the Hind, etc. to see if it brings a bit more structure. I'd really love your feedback. Please do let me know if you're enjoying it. All right, let's get into it. So our first theme tonight is the missile launcher for Lise. Now, if you weren't aware, the afterburner is now a full 50% faster than it was. Just one. Helicopters trying to take advantage of the below radar rule are also getting caught out a lot more now. On this next one, just watch how the afterburner closes down the stealth chopper before it can make the turn and get away. I think this next one demonstrates how a Nightbird pilot here genuinely thought they were out of range and not at risk. Not only are they 50% faster, they now go 33% farther with 3.2. I'm sure the pilot community will adjust, but for now people are getting caught out. I mean, just watch how casually this pilot's flying after attacking my railgun. I don't see any danger at all. Got it! Scratch my vehicle! I mean, this missile launcher is now so good that when I ran out of rail shots trying to hit this uh, nightbird, I just got out and did it with Lee's missile launcher just as effectively. Like I say, I think maybe word's not out about the changes yet, and a lot of pilots just don't see it coming. By the way, just to prove, I can hit a nightbird with a railgun. Yes, Railguns on the back line were causing us no small degree of problems, and we'll get to that later in the video. In addition to the speed, you also have much better control in the missile now, too. Enemy vehicle neutralized! So yeah, there were a lot more uh, missile kills, but I think you get the idea about the power of the change that's happened here, and I've been loving it. I'll end on a funny, I horribly missed this shot. But uh, this is why it's important to have friends. Thank you very much, Mr. Jet Pilot. You uh, absolutely saved me there. 
Right, so in this next section, I had one run, and only one run really, with the uh, Apache, and now I get to try it out, particularly with Below Radar, and implementing the changes that you guys recommended I make to my gameplay and my loadout. So now I'm using the 127mm missiles and the tow rocket. Let's see how we go. struggling a little bit with the heaviness of it relative to the stealth chopper which has been my preferred up till now. Okay, good little dodge there and here's my chance, tow missile time. Nice, I mean I know it was heavily damaged but uh, much better than using one of those AGM missiles so thank you for that advice. Um, staying below 30 meters so I can't be locked onto, let's see if we can uh, catch anyone else out. Support drop available whenever you're ready. Yeah, I'm still not convinced about these missiles. I still think they're quite inferior to having either the 30mm cannon that the Hokum has or the machine gun coming on the Nightbird or on the Stealth Chopper. I'm gonna be more convincing that these are actually better. Anyway, at least we got the assist. Uh, let's move on to the next target. Disappointed that didn't connect. Anyway, play on. Got some hits in. Uh, try to turn around to get another pass at it, but I think my team on the ground have already taken him out. Anyway, while looking around for another vehicle, I start taking some incoming fire, so I back off and loop around so we don't get taken down too early. I'm trying to hold on to the chopper and survive here. Seeing the weekend, a long way to go. Good hit from the toe, can we finish up? Nope, can't finish it up, I need to back off because I'm burning. Let's come around and see if we can have one more pass at this. Again, a good hit from the toe, but can we finish it? That's the key test. There we go. Uh, finally, we got a clean, somewhat independent uh, take out of the tank using the new modification. And yes, it was significantly better and significantly faster than the way I've been doing it previously. So thank you for the advice and I shall keep practicing to see if I can make more out of the Apache. I still think it's inferior to the Stealth Chopper. My mind is not changed yet but I am willing to give it a chance. Let's play on. Not feeling these 127mm for air-to-air -air battles at all. Anyway, the Nightbird's on me. Uh, this only ends one way. I'm going to get ripped apart. Someone suggested uh, in a comment that it was my fault for being a bad pilot. Show me the video where someone actually gets out of a situation like that and wins a fight. Without someone helping, I'll be quiet. Uh, I had one more go with the 127mm rockets. Um, I'm doing my best. I am trying to learn to love them and I will continue to try. But uh, I'm going to need some need to see some pretty big improvement in their use case before I uh, say that they're better than having a cannon. Right, let's move on to this section. One of the cool things I've noticed on Breakaway with so many people playing on this 128 map is that it's absolute chaos on the ground. And I noticed that I was getting a lot more kills off the back of other people doing the damage first. So what I'm saying here is something I've never really heard other people say. Always take the shot, even if it doesn't have kill written on it, because even if you don't make the kill, your friend will. There you go. Let's take a look at a few more. Perfect teamwork with someone I didn't even know. We hold more sectors than the enemy. Our troops have secured an objective. Keep up! Wait for it. Lovely. I can die happy knowing we took it down. 
So I noticed something last night that might be a little bit of an unintended consequence of returning to the class system, and particularly with engineers giving every single engineer a repair tool without having to trade anything out to have it. We all have one as default. When you have two people in the back and they're repairing you as you fly, if you're, fl if you're fighting against a smaller aircraft like a Nightbird or a Stealth Chopper or you know an Apache or a, a Hokum, you are effectively immortal. I mean, nothing short of a railgun, a Condor coming in fully loaded as you are, or some kind of extremely lucky headshot is going to kill you. They can fire into you all day. Now, before you think I'm selfish, as you can see in the top left, I did my shift for other gamers too. I sat here repairing so they could have their fun. But when you've got people doing this for you, you can't be touched. So shortly after bullying him out the sky, another Nightbird has a try. See if you can spot the moment when they realize they're screwed. I know this isn't new per se, but now with the number of engineers with the return of the class system and the amount of people holding repair tools, this is going to happen a lot, and I'm wondering if we need to think about something like having a maximum repair value to stop it being abused? Anyway, poor helicopters, they're just getting bullied left, right and center. does help when you have the full crew granting you the gift of immortality and immense firepower. Right, so moving on from bullying the helicopters, uh, let's go have a look at the top of the map. So this is E2. It's not new per se, but it is a reworked um, uh, point sector that needs to be captured. So just have a little bit of a look here. I'll speed it up. You don't need to hang around here for too long. The real fun is the next one down, this E1. So this is an entirely new section interwoven into the mountain. And it's really, really good fun, and particularly fun to try and get a helicopter in here. Anyway, I'm just calling it out. It's a new section of the map, and I really enjoyed it, and I've had a lot of really good fights in here. So just putting this in so you can have a little look at it. Enemy trying to seize Echo 2. So you can see the fight point is a downed condor, that's uh, the objective they need to capture. And it's a very good thing the helicopter blades aren't programmed with a collision, so you can get away with doing this. So anyway, to wrap this up, you see me doing a lot of uh, taking out the helicopters and generally bullying helicopters in the hind, but uh, we were equally being bullied by the other team, and uh, anti-air is an absolute nightmare on breakaway. So here's me literally going to the longest distance I've ever run to take out an anti-air that was just bullying the heck out of our team. Sector Delta under allied control. I invested a lot in getting that kill, so I'm glad I didn't get run over. Right, conscious of the time, 13 minutes, a bit over actually, so I'll leave you with this. Uh, one of the things I noticed on Breakaway is you have railguns sitting on the back line, just firing in, but sitting in an area where vehicles can't get to them. And if nobody's equipped their aerial vehicles with anti-air, uh, with anti-vehicle, sorry, there's absolutely nothing you can do about them. So I decided to make myself into a human cannonball. What do you think? Is this unsporting conduct? I think it's fair. If you're going to sit in the spawn, anything goes. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, particularly if you made it all the way to the end. I really, really appreciate it, and uh, I hope to catch you in the next video. Please, enjoy 3.2. It's a brave new world, and I'm absolutely loving it so far. Return to the fight!